Hey guys, I'm here today to do a book haul. So, I'm sitting in a new location, it's very exciting. Um, moving around the house to try and find more comfortable spots has led to me finding, you know, possibly wonderful filming locations. Who can tell? Lots of people seem to be enjoying me sitting in my very Halloween inspired living room with the black walls and the orange sofa. So let's hope this aesthetic is as good. Don't think it is, it's much more subtle in here. We've gone for like a, a colour like the colour of plaster on walls because we had all our walls plastered and we love the colour so much we just thought let's just put a colour paint on it that matches. So that's what we did. And also I saw it all over Pinterest and Instagram and thought I want a bit of that. So that's what's happened here. The chair's a little bit creaky so apologies. And I'm in a bit of a weird mood because I've had an odd few days pain wise but at the same time I'm feeling quite positive because I finally have an appointment with a neurologist tomorrow so I'm hoping they're not a complete knobhead and they actually listen to me and try and help. Fingers crossed, can't really do that, that'll hurt. So I have a stack of books and to be honest I probably shouldn't lift them up but if I don't I've got to like insert pictures of them later um, and Johnny will help me with that but I just can't really be asked with that. So I'm just going to hold them up quickly and then you guys can like remember what the cover is. <laughs> so um, that'll be that'll be lovely for you. So I've got a couple more like obvi ones and then I've got some that I've not heard as many people talk about um, and I'm hoping will be really good. So let's get the most sort of buzzy one out of the way I guess. The New Wilderness by Diane Cook. So I'm just going to leave my arm here. So. I read half of her short story collection, Man vs Nature, when it came out a few years ago. I'm going to be honest, I was in one of those moods where I had about 300 unread books, I had way too many books that publishers sent me, her book was one of them, and I was purging, I was getting rid of anything and everything. And I did get rid of a few books that I was sort of enjoying, but not loving, and her book was one of them. I enjoyed the stories, but they weren't phenomenal and they were all like similar in the fact they were all dystopian. So when I knew she had a novel coming out that was a dystopian novel I was really excited because I thought well I liked what she did in short story form but it just wasn't quite enough and you know giving her the length of a novel may give her that and then obviously it was long listed and then short listed for the Booker Prize so now lots of people are reading it which is very exciting for her. So if you don't know I'm gonna put it down now if you don't know this is set in a dystopian world in which people live in urban areas, it's awful pollution because of climate change, obvi, and this woman gets a chance to go to I think like this experimental um, location called the New Wilderness when she takes her daughter with her and she's one of the very few people who get to go and I don't think it's quite as like utopian as they hope it will be. So sounds a little bit like weird commune vibes let's see. I am a bit concerned because to be honest I wanted it on audio because I really wanted to read it and obviously I'm not really reading physical books. I have managed to read a couple of shorter physical books that are like really flexible and like I have a little book bean bag I lean them on but this is definitely not going to be one of those books it's not very flexible at all um, and I just couldn't find it on audible which I think is a shame particularly seeing as it's now like been shortlisted for the booker and it's still really lacking in availability so yeah sort yourself out one world feel bad because i like one world so the next one i um i considered this one on audible as well because i and again i know like a lot, a lot of people in the us have been talking about um libro fm i think and saying like to try and use that because it supports indie bookshops um, but we don't have the equivalent of that in the UK, so I need to find a way to get audiobooks that isn't Amazon, really. And also, lots of people have told me about my library. Honestly, I've looked into the services. It's utter shite. There's barely anything available, so I'm giving up on that. So, anyway, the book I'm talking about before I run on is um, Utopia Avenue by David Mitchell. So, I have read all of David Mitchell's novels, and I, I would... <laughs> say that he is one of my favourite living novelists. I don't know why I added the living, just just novelists. I don't have many favourite dead ones, if any. Maybe Daphne de Maurier, although some of her books aren't great. Anyway, David Mitchell. But I haven't read a lot of his books in a while, so I need to reread them. Anyway, I looked into um, an audio version and there was one, but I was a bit unsure about the narrator. 
And then I sort of thought about it and I was like, I just feel like I've read all of his books in physical form. Um, some of them quite a long time ago. And there's like this tradition of reading his books like physically. And I don't want to break that tradition if possible. So I bought it knowing that it's probably going to be a while until I can read it, which is okay. So if this was not written by David Mitchell, I would not buy it. I don't like the cover. I get that a lot of people probably would like that. I don't like it at all. I do like the um, end papers. They're pretty cool. But um, I also don't like this other plot. So this is, it starts in the 60s in London and it follows um, the formation of a band called Utopia Avenue. I think they're a psychedelic band. And it follows them through their stardom and fame and then like they break up. And it just follows their story basically. There's going to be a little bit of weirdness because there always is in David Mitchell books but from what I've heard there's not a lot of weirdness in this one. So yeah like I feel like I could enjoy this um, but the only book I've read Where Are You? is Daisy Jones and the Six the Taylor Jenkins Read which I did actually enjoy and that was about um, the formation of a band, a band very like Fleetwood Mac. And I really enjoyed it, it was just a really sort of pulpy, quick read. Um, and maybe this will be like the London version of that, and if so, then I'm sure I'll enjoy it. But I'm not massively into books to do with the art scene. Um, when it's art, I'm really not into it. Music? Mm. So we shall see. The next book I've seen lots of people being sent advanced readers copies of, and I'm very excited about it, and just intrigued by it. Um, and that is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. So I haven't read any of Alyssa Cole's books. She is known as a romance writer, I believe, and I have actually got quite a few of her books um, saved for me to listen to and to give a go. But this is a psychological thriller, which I feel like is very different from a romance. So this is set in um, Brooklyn, um, and it's very focused on the idea of how um, Brooklyn, lots of neighbourhoods in Brooklyn are being um, gentrified and what that's like for like, long-term residents. Um, so she runs into a, a man and it says their deep dive into history quickly becomes a dizzying descent into paranoia and fear. Um, their neighbours may not have moved to the suburbs after all and the push to revitalise the community may be more deadly than advertised. So I don't know if this is sort of like a conspiracy type thing. I'm getting vibes of Hot Fuzz but without the comedy. So we shall see and I feel like that could be like a really pulpy read and also this is 100% going to be a book where you can properly crack the spine and it'll be really easy to read. In fact, I'll do it now. And I know some people hate this. I absolutely love it. So look, it'll be super easy. I can just have it on my little book being bag like that. Loving life. It's got a lovely big old crack down the spine now. It's not even been read. Some people will probably be crying now into their, into their handkerchiefs. So <laughs> um, what else have I got? I've got a few more. Shall I show you the non-fiction? Yes, I shall. So I kindly sent these two by Granta. I really love um, the books that Granta bring out. I think that um, in terms of publishers, if I could work for a publisher, which I never would. Basically, I just want to have a job where I work for a publisher and I sit in a really comfy room with loads of like snacks and stuff. Um, and just iced coffee and hot chocolate and just only read good submissions and then decide like, let me publish it and then we get to choose the cover. That is the job I'd like. Let me know if that's possible. But anyway, if I could do that, I'd like to do that for Granta. Hit me up. So, um, this is the Museum of Wales You Will Never See Travels Among the Collectors of Iceland by A. Kendra Green. It is beautiful. It's quite short. And I feel like this will be um, quite easy to hold. It's just got these lovely little pale blue end papers as well. I feel like... And the end papers are winning today. So, this is um, set in Iceland. Uh, I believe she's an American writer. Let's have a little look. Yeah, she's a fellow at Harvard University's Library Innovation Lab. What a job title. So, I think this is basically about Iceland's museums and like the obsession of um, that that goes into being a curator and obviously there's going to be lots of whale bones there and shit like that. So yeah, I like stuff about other countries. I always have a slight edge of concern to do with books that are to do with the natural world as to how they will talk about animals because yeah, 
I, yeah, and I'll say the same thing about the next one. So I'm interested in both, but there's just a slight edge of trepidation. I also just want to say we had our roof done recently because um, whenever it rained, everything leaked. And um, there's loads of dust come down into this room because this is the room where the loft hatch goes up into. And so all of these books are just covered in a fine coating of dust. So this is beautiful. This is Between Light and Storm, How We Live with Other Species by Esther Wolfson. And this one, God, just winning, winning. I love green. So, um, I believe this author has written lots of non-fiction books about birds. She's lived with birds for many years. Um, and in this book, she's studying our complex relationship between humans and animals. She begins with our shared origins on Earth, um, our interactions all across time. Um, and she looks into the consequences of our belief in human superiority really hard to say. She explores our representation of animals in art, our consumption of them for food, our experience in them for science and our willingness to slaughter them for sport, fashion and decoration, as well as our concepts of love and ownership. So I read the first few pages um, and I liked her tone, but I always have a question when I start reading a book that deals with um, animal rights, um, cruelty towards animals. And that question is, is the author themselves vegan? Like what, what they're writing about, are they following through? Because from reading that as a blurb, it would make no sense to me if the author can acknowledge all those things as being awful things, but yet participates in them by consuming animal products. So she hasn't acknowledged that in the first 10 pages. <laughs> feel like she should get to that straight away. Also, she mentioned something about um, some pet birds and she she uses language that denotes ownership. So for example, um, when people have cats whom they live with and they say, my cat. I have an issue with that, guys. Let's think about why we need to um, talk about animals we live with in terms of ownership. I know in a lot of cases, money has passed hands. Also bizarre that we've got to that point with animals. But yeah, I just feel like it'd be really nice if we could all just say the wonderful cat that I have the privilege of living with rather than my cat. So <laughs> there's that. I've got three more to talk about. So the next two were both sent to me by Dialogue Books. I really love the stuff they're bringing out. It's definitely worth checking out their Instagram and also all of their books are beautiful. Although the weakest end paper so far. This is um, Reproduction by Ian Williams. Just gonna quickly show you the end papers. Sort of look like concrete, not so sure. So this um, won the Scotia Bank Giller Prize. Hope I've said that correctly which is a really big prize in Canada. This has been super buzzy in Canada um, and obviously <laughs> like nowhere else because um, unfortunately for countries like Canada and Australia, like unlike the UK and the US, when books are super celebrated, it doesn't necessarily like feed over to everywhere else, but I'm very happy that this has been picked up in the UK. And the next one is actually also a Canadian title, I think. Pretty sure it was, how very exciting. So. This is about um, a man and a woman who um, are both, um, both of their mothers are very ill and they're assigned to the same hospital room and so they meet like over the beds of their ailing mothers and a relationship blooms ripe with miscommunications and reprisals for perceived and real offences that have some unexpected results. Um, and then you fast forward in time and you look at their son who has all these ideas for like get rich quick schemes and you follow that story. I think this is supposed to be quite, like, humorous and satirical. I'm not a big fan of either of those things, but I'm trying to figure out why I'm not and to try and, like, push the boundaries of if I can be okay with those things. We shall see. I'm pretty sure, yes, long listed for the Giller Prize 2019, so I was right, this is also Canadian. Um, and I love the sound of this, so again, I was really happy when this was picked up. So, um, this is Frying Plantain by Salika Reed Benter. Glorious cover. <sighs> Plain end papers. We've gone all through 
guys. We've gone through all the wonderful ones from concrete to plain. So this is about a girl who is caught like at a junction between her Canadian nationality and her desire to be a true Jamaican. And I believe this is a collection of short stories that are set in little Jamaica, Toronto's Eglinton West neighbourhood. Canadians are going to be hating me for mis mispronouncing that. I deeply apologise. Um, so we watch her through many years of her life, sometimes on visits to Jamaica, meeting different members of her family. And it says, um, in this brilliantly incisive debut, she depicts the tensions between mothers and daughters, second generation Canadians and first generational cultural expectations and black identity in a predominantly white society. Why would you not want to read this? I also love like interlinked short story collections and I think more and more of them are being published which makes me happy. And then the last one I am so excited for. I feel like like it could be in my top books of the year. I've only read a page but <laughs> I feel like I could really adore this one. And just double check the end papers and they're gonna pass the test okay guys. And this is Scabby Queen by Kirsten Innes. So I read her debut novel which is Fishnet and I really enjoyed it. Uh, she is a Scottish novelist and her books are very um, steeped in the um, Scottish nationality which I love. Um, her stories are focused on working class Scottish women. I don't think we hear enough from either a Scottish woman in uh, you know publishing in the UK is so focused on London based writers and stories that take place in London and also we don't hear enough from working class people so really loved Fishnet this one sounds even better look at that just title cover everything's brilliant so I feel like it's okay that the end papers are black because they really like pop against the other colours so you know so Three days before her 51st birthday, Cleo Campbell, one hit wonder political activist, lifelong love and one night stand, kills herself in Ruth's spare bedroom. Um, news spreads um, and with it the story of Cleo's life. Listen to this. From the Isle of Skye to an anarchist squat in Brixton, from a yoga retreat in Greece to Glasgow on the night of the Scottish referendum. Half a century of memories, of pain and joy and that peculiar feeling in between the two a wrench to the surface all at once. It's about the silencing of women's voices, the destructive power of the celebrity machine, but most of all, it's about empathy. I just think that sounds absolutely fucking brilliant. And I love, 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 love stories about women raising women's voices up and stories that are set in multiple locations, particularly when one of them is an island. So there we go, Scabby Queen, Kirsten Inez. I think I'm gonna love it. And I read the first page and I just adored it, so you know, all bets are on, guys. So um, I think that's everything. I don't think the chair creaked very much either, so I did quite well, quite well. These plants don't actually live here. Usually I just have stacks of books I need to talk about in videos here, it's not particularly attractive. So these are just like, um, what do you call them, props for my film set. <laughs> And I just move them in, just move them in whenever I need to film. So you may have noticed this plant is in every video these days. I just move the plant around wherever I'm going to film. Mainly because Albus will eat any leafy plant we have. And so this guy has survived many years, it's absolutely thriving. And that's because we just keep him on a really high shelf where Albus can't get to him. And he only moves down low either when I need to do a video or when we've got people coming around we want to impress. And make them think we're really good with houseplants we just move it down we just watch albus usually albus is too scared of whoever the people are so he doesn't come in so yep that is my book haul of books that i probably can't read because I can't read physical books other than the spine we cracked i'll read that one soon and actually it's thriller so maybe good for october i don't know um this one would probably be amazing i mean I do love listening to books on audio when the accent matters. So like these two would probably be great because we're gonna have maybe a touch of a Jamaican accent. She lives in Canada, so I'm unsure. And then this would be a Scottish, maybe specifically Glaswegian. I've probably said that awfully. I'm sorry to all Scottish people. 
So those two would be really good on audio. The rest, mediocre. So um, yeah, God, I'm losing my fucking mind. I need to go take some more tablets, I think. Or maybe less tablets is key here. Um, the other day, my prescription ran out. One second. And I had to have a couple of days off the drugs. It was not good. So, um, yeah, I've refilled the prescription, taken them again, and very excited about the neurology appointment tomorrow. Wish me luck. So, yeah, that's the update, guys. Let me know if you've read any of these. Um, and, yeah, just thoughts. What are your thoughts on these books and end papers? Let me know what your favourite end paper was. And also, one second. This, oh God, this guy lit up whilst I was filming because he's so sensitive and I must have slammed book down and he just turned on. So he's been having a party while I've been filming and you guys haven't been aware. So yeah, because I'm so professional, I just acted like it wasn't happening. <laughs> I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop. Thanks so much for watching. I hope this has been enjoyable, um, editable for me, really, and um, that you're enjoying your week. What day is it? Thursday, nearly the weekend. Ooh, for anyone who doesn't work in retail. And um, yeah, or, or any healthcare profession, they have to work weekends too. So yeah, goodbye. <laughs>